Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Another video based on your suggestions here, this time having to do with a monster that's located in Africa and has a very notorious reputation there. Uh, apparently when it comes to this particular cryptid, it's essentially what their Loch Ness monster is, what their version of a Sasquatch is. Um, in other words, certain areas around the world, they have their own notorious, infamous type cryptid slash monster. Here in this case with Africa, it has to do with one called the Nandi Bear, which according to all the information that I looked up that I'm about to present to you here, it's still kind of hard to discern exactly what it is and uh, you'll know what I mean about this in a few minutes when I go over possible explanations as far as what the Nandi bear is exactly so as far as it's the Nandi bear the history tied to it here's what it is um, it's a particular monster that's found in Africa particularly in the east area of Kenya and the reason why it's called the Nandi bear is because there is a tribe there called the Nandi tribe. They were the ones that have discovered this particular monster and they're the ones that uh, frequently cite its visits. So just through basic association, that's where it's called the Nandi bear. Although the um, cryptid slash monster here has several other names. Uh, another name that it gets is called the Carrot bear, K-E-R-I-T. Others call it the Pokemo. Um, another one, another tribe calls it the um, Goloko. So it all depends on the type of tribes that are coming across it and the base and the various names that it's come that they've come up with for this particular monster. It's it's very unique um, because one thing that's tied to this monster is that there's nothing tied to it. Uh, there's nothing that is concrete. Various tribes and various encounters all have different variations of the encounters, including how it looks like, how it acts, what it does, um, its names, everything. So a very unique monster, this, uh, this thing called a Nandi Bear. But here's the basic characteristics, at least a composite of what people have said that seems to be in unison of what it is. Think of it like a super-sized hyena. And those that have gone on any trips to Africa or those that have seen anything involving documentaries on hyenas know that they are a pretty set of ferocious animals. Um, they're not exactly big hunters, although they can be um, whenever they hunt in packs. But traditionally, hyenas are, for the most part, scavengers. This thing, however, the Nandi bear, is the complete opposite. It is absolutely a hunter, a ferocious hunter, a vicious hunter in the sense that various places that I looked up information on the Nandi bear and various uh, people that have encountered the Nandi bear state that everything having to do with this monster is that it looks, it looks to hunt. Um, very, very differently than anything else there in Africa. Those animals there pretty much hunt only for food or hunt out of a sense in some cases of protection when it comes to their tribe. But this particular creature, no, it hunts for the love of it. It apparently hunts when it can, it enjoys it, and it does so uh, particularly towards humans, which also makes it very, very unique because any animals that have been known to hunt humans there in Africa, um, it's been said that, it, that the only reason they're doing so is because they themselves are being attacked by the humans, <clears throat> and so they're wanting to make sure that there's um, this threat is stopped, and apparently also the ones, the animals that are debilitated or near death, they tend to hunt humans because humans sometimes are the easiest prey, depending on circumstances, as opposed to, let's say, trying to hunt um, a gazelle, something that is running really, really fast and will just elude the animal. No, in, in those cases, then that's when they turn to hunting humans. Not so with this particular nanny bear. It is said to pretty much only attack humans for one unique feature it loves human brains I know as crazy as it sounds but like like let's say your average monster of the week in sci-fi no uh, no it, it loves human brains and that's why it hunts them particularly children 
and natives from nearby villages. Now as far as the description of the Nandi bear, again think of it like a supersized hyena. That's the most common distinct feature is um, just think of your average hyena but somewhere around six feet tall in some cases maybe even taller and it has a very muscular structure. I mean especially with regards to its shoulders and with regards to its arms and in some and, and the chest as well it is very very muscular um, almost like the musculature of let's say a silverback um, and, and then its bottom part where its legs are uh, its back end's legs are it's not quite so muscular probably for the sense of of trying to balance things out and make sure that it can move pretty fast otherwise if its legs were, were gargantuan it would be a little bit more difficult for it to run as fast as it's reported to do so. Um, also with regards to this creature, it has either long reddish or yellowish hair, much again like a hyena. It has a short, broad tail. Um, it also has a large set of claws, but, but the unique distinction is that these claws seem to be like, a, like related to bear claws, um, which are long and elongated and also the teeth seem to be more along the lines of a bear like the snout of more along the lines of a bear in fact that's one set of unique circumstances that people say what those that have encountered is that they believe that the hyena that this particular nandi bear seems to be a mixture of a supersized hyena and a bear and then that's why uh, pe the reason people say that is because when this thing runs it has a very unique sloping run. Um, anyone that has seen how a bear runs um, in, the, in any kind of films or anything involving like your average National Geographic show, you'll know that bears have a very unique sloping gallop, um, much of it because of the weight tied to the bear. I mean, it's gigantic. It, it has um, so much weight, especially on the front side, that it's not going to run like, let's say, your average cheetah or anything along those lines. No, instead it'll almost gallop forward and that's how this particular Nandi bear does so as well. Very unique because uh, I came across several times where people described um, encountering it and when it was either going away or towards the person they noticed that uh, galloping sloping uh, running stance that it seems to have so quite quite unique um, another characteristic of this animal is that it is strictly nocturnal it only hunts at night and it also does so only on dark moonless nights that seems to be its favorite thing to do probably because with its heightened senses and its super eyesight um, it's able to even under complete darkness um, essentially pick out its victims quite easily um, as opposed to the victims um, during a completely dark moonless nights imagine somebody there from one of the villages I mean they don't have much of anything in terms of traditional light that you and I would have so when it runs into something like this it absolutely has the complete advantage also another unique thing about this Nandi bear is that it is as comfortable running on the ground and attacking on the ground as it is through treetops um, and this is probably because of those claws those large bear like claws that it has within um, its body those claws by the way apparently also face inward much like a bears would and with one swipe people have said that it's been able to knock people's heads off along those lines with one single swipe but yeah it's apparently as comfortable as it is on treetops as it is on the ground and it favors the treetops because of the unique angle where they can attack from above and then just swipe people's heads off aiming particularly for the brain which is again a delicacy um, they will uh, uh, this is one of their favorite things to do. Um, now as far as the sightings, here are some of the reports straight from people that have come across it. These reports range from hundreds of years back up until you know uh, either last century or past century up until the current century. So we're talking about a creature that it's not necessarily one creature that's living this long in terms of hundreds of years but rather it's a whole species that is just continuing 
to exist there in Africa. It's just a species, just like any other species in Africa, like any other elephants or any other lions. It has its own tribe. It births other members of the tribe. And then it, um, once those uh, those little cubs become other Nandi bear, then they birth others and then they die. And then it just continues in that same cycle. So here, uh, for example, there was a gentleman named by uh, Katapmetit Kipet is his name. Um, he was the head of a Nandi village. He reports seeing a Nandi bear and here's where he describes it. He calls it a devil which prowls the hut settlement on the darkest nights seeking people, especially children, to devour. It is half like a man and half like a huge ape-faced bird and you may know it at once from its fearful howling roar and because in the dark of night its mouth glows red like the embers of the log. How creepy is that? Uh, everybody reports seeing animals at night and the angles of the eyes, how they reflect uh, certain low points of light and how they look so creepy but in this case the thing that's actually emanating and glowing red is the mouth itself of the Nandi bear. Creepy, creepy stuff. And again, we're talking about an animal that enjoys killing. I mean, it enjoys the hunt. It, it, it lives for it. Um, here are two other experiences that uh, occurred. These had to do with Kenya colonists, uh, one by the name of Major Brathwaite and another one by the name of Kenneth Archer. Um, they stated the following. In fact, the um, Here's again a good description of what they saw. They saw an animal that they thought at first was a lioness, um, but however, things changed when they started to notice the snout of the creature. They described it as something that stood very high forward towards the top, at least four feet three inches or four feet six inches at the shoulder. That goes to show how huge it is because if you measure something at the shoulder and let's say it's just resting, and at that point it's nearly five feet tall, that thing is huge. They said that the back of this creature sloped steeply to the hindquarters and the animal moved with a shambling gait which can best be described with the shuffle of a bear. The coat was thick and dark brown in color and finally the beast broke into a shambling trot and made for a belt of trees near the river where it was lost. So that's one description in terms of the Nandi bear. Another one it had to do um, sometime in the early 1900s. There was a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey Williams. Um, he wrote the following with regards to his encounter. He said, I was traveling with a cousin on the, uh, I don't know what this name is, Yusingashu, just after the Nandi expedition. And of course, long before there was any settlement up there, we had been camped near the Mataya and were marching towards the Surgat Wark when we saw the beast. I saw a large animal sitting up on its hunches no more than 30 yards away. Its attitude was just out of a bear at the zoo asking for buns. Probably like um, referring to a, a bear that's uh, an animal that's not threatened. It's just there, uh, just expecting food to be around it. And I should say it must have been nearly five feet high. It dropped forward and shambled away towards the surgot with what my cousin always describes as a sort of sideways canter. I snatched my rifle and took a snap shot at it as it was disappearing among the rocks, and though I missed it, it stopped and turned its head around to look at us. In size, it was, I should say, larger than a bear that lives in the pit at the zoo, and it was quite as heavily built. The four quarters were thickly furred, as were all four legs, but the hind quarters were comparatively speaking smooth or bare. The head was long and pointed and exactly like that of a bear. I had not a very clear recollection of the ears beyond the fact that they were small and the tail, if any, was very small and practically unnoticeable. So pretty unique. Another circumstance, another encounter there. One more had to do in the early 1900s. This was yet another military person in and around that area, a guy by the name of Major Tolson. He reported this um, as far as encounter there in 1912. He said, one of my boys came into my room and said that a leopard was close to the kitchen. I rushed out at once and saw a strange beast making off. It appeared to have long hair behind and was rather low in front. I say it stood about 18 to 20 inches in at the shoulder. 
and it appeared to be black with a gait similar to that of a bear, a kind of a shuffling walk. So you can see that those several experiences, again, all seem to state it, it's something that looks like a bear and has the, um, the walk or the run of a bear, but they're not outright saying that it's a bear. It's something else all entirely different. Um, could it be like a mixture, you know, a supersized hyena? Or what if you imagine, like, let's say something uh, crossbreeding between a bear and a hyena? Could it be something like this? Very interesting stuff. More reports started surf surfacing, too, about the Nandi bear um, there in Africa whenever there was a railway being built, something called the Madari Railway. And that's when a bunch of workers were able to come across a series of canine-like tracks um, there in the railway. Apparently, the Nandi bear, again, favoring humans as its delicacy, noticed that with all this construction happening on that railway, there uh, was something that was not necessarily hunting them outright because there weren't any reports of deaths, but there was something that was tracking them. In fact, um, several of the workers there were able to find a series of eight and a half inch tracks um, that were that large there on the ground that in included five toes instead of four and what they considered a rather long heel. So interesting, interesting stuff. One final thing that I'll describe here as far as another encounter uh, was one of the engineers working on that railway, a guy by the name of G.W. Hicks, um, he encountered this beast and he gave a strict, a specific date of March 8th, 1913. Uh, here's what he had to say. He said, it was almost on the line when I first saw it and at that time it had already seen me and was making off at a right angle to the line. As I got closer to the animal, I saw it was not a hyena. At first I saw it nearly broadside on. It then looked about as high as a lion. In color it was tawny, about like a black maned lion, with very shaggy long hair. It was short and thick set in the body with high withers and had a short neck and a stumpy nose. It did not turn to look at me but loped off, running with its four legs and with both hind legs rising at the same time. As I got alongside it, it was about 40 to 50 yards away and I noticed it was very broad across the rump, had very short ears, and had no tail that I could see. As its hind legs came out of the grass, I noticed the legs were very shaggy right down to the feet, and that the feet seemed large. So interesting stuff, yet another encounter having to do with this particular Mandy Bear. Um, as far as other encounters, um, anytime more recently, Wherever this Nandi bear is, maybe it's decided that being near humans isn't exactly as fruitful or as safe as it should be. And so any sightings after like the 1920s, they have tapered off. Um, people have just not come across it, but it still maintains more of an urban legend type status there in um, Africa, much like again, like the Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster, um, people will still say every now and then, I've seen it, it's here, um, I've come across it, no evidence of it yet, of course, but I've seen it. And so that's what the kind of, of experience that people tend to have now, the kind of legend that it perpetrates now. So, so what is exactly the Nandi Bear? Um, I talked about this at the beginning of the video as to the possible explanations for it. Some people believe that it is actually a long lost cousin of not a dinosaur but of an extinct species of hyena that was the largest set of hyena ever in the world. Um, it was a prehistoric hyena. It existed somewhere around three million years ago but it died about 400,000 years ago. Um, this is the name of it. It's called the Pachi, oh Lord, these names, Pachi Crocuda. And that was a prehistoric hyena, which you'll see a picture of here. It was with the largest set of hyena to ever exist in the world. But if that's the case, it was only estimated to weigh about 240 pounds in weight which, um, to give you an example, is probably about the size of a lioness today. So here we're talking about something, if it truly is, let's say, a cousin or a long-lost species that's tied to this extinct hyena, then we're talking about something that has morphed into a much larger species because, again, we're talking about um, a Danandi bear being the size of a bear, much larger than a lion. 
So if it truly is from this particular species and it survived the dinosaur age and still lives out there in Africa, then it has definitely become a supersized version of it. Other people characterize the um, the Nandi bear as looking and moving like what would have been another long lost species of mammals from the dinosaur age. Uh, this having to do with uh, something called the Chali Khatri, which you'll see a picture of here. The only difference though is this particular species, um, it was strictly an herbivore. It ate only plants. It did not eat anything else in terms of animals, especially anything having to do with brains. So if, if people are saying that it's this particular species, but again it survived the dinosaur age up until now, then somewhere along the way um, it it got rid of its vegetarianism and that's when it started to eat um, animals especially people I don't believe um, that it, the case of this Nandi bear being this I, I believe it's far more uh, what could be the previous species the the Apache Crocuda being something that just survived there in Africa the dinosaur age and is living there to this day others uh, pretty much state that it is like a current set of hyena but somehow it mated or was crossbred with a bear because in essence it is I mean it, it certainly does seem like if you would mix the genes between a hyena and a bear you would get something like this so who knows somewhere along the way somehow a bear mated with a hyena or vice versa or maybe it was done by a sick and weird doctor who knows but somebody um, but still, some people still believe that it's just a mixture. It's a unique species of a bear-like hyena that is roaming somewhere there in Africa. But that's about it. Those are the explanations as far as the Nandi bear. Um, there are others that state there are other types of species, but they seem to pretty much be similar to what I just described with the other three species. So what do you guys think? The Nandi bear, is this something as far as a legend, a local legend there in Africa, specifically around the uh, Kenya area? Is it an animal? that people just misinterpret as a hyena, a regular hyena, but through the years and through the exaggerations, you know, it just takes on a story of its own where all of a sudden it goes from four feet to six feet to eight feet and so forth in terms of height. Um, do, do you believe that it's a long lost species of, a, of something that was extinct for almost, you know, several hundred thousand years now, but it's still somewhere in Africa and to survive the dinosaur age. I think that's most likely in my case. What do you guys think? Post your comments, share them below. Um, if anyone knows any tales too tied to the Nandi bear, anything else that I haven't described here, particularly something that's hopefully far more recent, um, something having to do like, let's say with the late 1900s, maybe even, even into the 2000s, it'd be great to hear. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.